the names and authors of the books will be in the video's description. My name is John and I will take you through some books I pulled out of storage that I think are pretty good. So let's begin. The first book is The End Charidian. Everyone's seen this book. It's from Epictetus. This version in particular, it's the George Long Great Books in Philosophy version, basically a college text. You can get it for a couple dollars. Um, it has some uncanny sayings in it that I like. It's a Stoic book, and the Stoics to me were not really the truest philosophers. So this book to me is good, but not essential. I still like it, but it lacks some of the mysticism of real philosophy. So it's like a 5 out of 10. Let's go to the next It's kind of random, but it's the kind of books that I like, so. Everyone's seen this book. On the Sensations of Tone by Herman Helmholtz. Um, yeah, a German guy. It's very data-oriented scientific stuff. It's like something that would accompany cymatics studies or vibrational physics or kind of nerdy music theory type stuff on a more scientific level. Um, it's not an easy book to come by and it's still going to cost you ten bucks probably, even used. So, would I say pick it up? Um, Yes and no, maybe this one would be a good download book to get because personally I haven't really been, since I bought it, I haven't really been drawn into it to read it through. Um, even looking at it, I can kind of get the idea for it and not be too excited to want to read it front to back. But it is very interesting. So, I don't know. This one I would say is about a seven, seven and a half out of ten in my scale. So that's Herman Helmholtz. Let's see. Here's a strange book. It's called The Tai Suan Ching. The Hidden Classic, A Lost Companion of the I Ching, reconstructed and translated by Derek Walters um, from Aquarian Press, which is not a good publisher. Um, so, this is something that correlates to I Ching, but it's not the, you know, there's a handful of books on I Ching that everyone gets. So this one's an alternative to that. Um, as far as it containing deeper things, um, it looks interesting. I would give this a 6 or maybe a 7, but probably like a 6 out of 10. Um, I don't want to get rid of it though because just in the slight case that there is something important in here because I haven't really read it yet although because it's from Aquarian Press they're not that good here's a very good one this I would give a 10 out of 10 on first glance you might not think that and that's actually where I had put it less than a 10 but after reading it, and some of the experiences that it brought me, 
I'll call experiences or visionary experiences. Well, you'll find out for yourself if you read this book. It's this book is the Nandor Fodor Encyclopedia of Psychic Science from University Books. This is in very good condition and it's a 1960s printing. You can tell by the look of it. And it's sold for 1750. University Books is a pretty good publisher. But Nandor Fodor is kind of like a, a psychic research person. And from what I understand, that's a Hungarian first name. So, um, there's a lot of good stuff in this book. And it goes along with the paranormal. So it's basically like a paranormal book. So if you have any interest in that, this one is good. There's a lot of them, but this one's really good compared to all the other ones I've seen that are basically encyclopedias of spirits and stuff like that, or spiritualism, psychic phenomena. So that's a 10. Um, here's a different one, different section called Tibetan Arts of Love by Gedeon Chopel. It's kind of like a tantric book. It's from Snow Lion. They're like an Eastern publisher, so it's not really totally mainstream Tibetan book, which is good. You don't want to get Tibetan books um, so that are like mainstream. So you may actually get some good knowledge out of this. Um, yeah, I'd say an 8 out of 10. Um, here's a classic. Gods of the Egyptians on a Dover version, a Dover reprint, which are good books for reading. They're very good books for reading. They're not really collector's items, but this is from E.A. Wallace Budge. Everyone would agree that he's basically a good source of information on Egypt. And I can't say that I've read this all the way through, but of all the Dover Egyptian books from Budge, from Wallace Budge, you could get them all and be in good waters with him. So he takes you through. So here's another Dover, Ignatius Donnelly's Atlantis, the Antediluvian World. This is kind of an undiscovered book, even though it's so well known. So I think there's definitely something to this. I don't put it on a high, high level, but I put it on a moderately high level. Ignatius Donnelly is an interesting character in as an author. So I would say this is a, a good book to have around. And I haven't read this one through yet. Uh, it has some cool stuff in it. So that's another Dover. You can see it's Dover. And they make sturdy books that last. So they seem to attract mold and mildew though. Here's a here's a great book. This is a reprint. Obviously, when you see these books, these are just copies of uh public domain materials. And you get very clear writing. So these books were released in like eighteen hundreds a lot of them, and it's like Masonic reprints and stuff. John Yarker's Arcane Schools, highly praised by Aleister Crowley. This book is basically a companion to H.P. Blavatsky, and I'm not that far into it. You can see where I'm at. I'm not saying all the information in this is 100%, but it is very, very essential book. And I would never get rid of this book because I want to read it through. Let's get this one in and out. This one's called Tibetan Tale of Love and Magic by Alexander David Neal. Um, this person was during the Nazi area, era, I mean, 
but she was not really, as far as I remember from the bio, she was not really a Nazi herself. So they had a lot of that mysticism stuff going around at that time. But this is more about her explorations. She was kind of a wild child explorer that traveled and traveled and, and ran into actual magicians in Tibet. So that's what this book is about. She's an interesting person too. So that's Alexander David Neal, Tibetan Tale of Love and Magic. I would give it, to me it doesn't seem that important to me. So maybe a seven, maybe an eight. I like her though. I don't think she was politically involved with any of that. Um, um, here's Homer's Iliad from Alexander Pope's translation in a little old book. What's this dated? It's got some really old writing in it. Um, it's definitely like 1900 something. 1899. Uh, Alexander Pope of the Iliad. Alexander Pope is pretty good. So his stuff's he's like a highly learned Englishman, so um huh. Um Here's another one that relates to that kind of Gottfried von Strasberg's Tristan. That's a classic. Um the one that that kinda like Richard Wagner based his stuff on. Um, Phenomena, A Book of Wonders by John Michel or Michael um, it looks kind of cheap it's actually from Thames and Hudson they're like an art printer they do art stuff so it's kind of cool I mean there's thousands of books like this but sometimes one will stand out like it has stuff about bodily elongation um, you can see it's, it's got some weird pictures in it and stuff. It's pretty cool. So I've set this one and saved it. I'd like to look through it, see if there's anything that piques my interest, any mysteries and things like that. So that's Phenomena, Book of Wonders. Um, yeah, this one, another Dover, and this one's almost like new. This is called Witchcraft, Magic, and Alchemy by Grillo de Givry. Um, this is a good book. It's not great. Um, it's old. It's kind of like superstitious type books that came out. Like There was a handful of them that came out around the 1800s and stuff like the one that wrote about vampires and stuff and he was a priest you get a lot of that stuff so it's like theistical superstitious stuff it's such a nice book but I mean I wouldn't want to do without this book really because it does on occasion have cool stuff but I don't take it at face value per se um, I'd give it like a 6 out of 10. Um, you're, you're probably wondering what's another 10 out of 10 book. Um, this is for sure a 10 out of 10 book. There's many printings of this book. This is the mass market version. Lame Deer, Seeker of Visions by John Fire Lame Deer and Richard Erdos. So this is one of the few Native American books that actually talks about real mystical things. Most of the Native American books have like a New Age tinge to it or something. This guy actually was a real medicine man. Lame deer. So that's a 10 out of 10 and this obviously people know this one better. The Black Elk Speaks book which is kind of like an 11 out of 10. But this is kind of like the esoteric version of it. So this is kind of like more hidden stuff in this. These two books together 
are like the best Native American spirituality books you can get. As far as I know, I've seen quite a few of them. These ones really add up to something like really, really awesome. So that's that. This is Black Elk Speaks, John G. Neardhart, and Lame Deer Seeker Visions. I'll put that in the description. I'm stacking them all up, and it'll be in the descriptions. So after that, we can jump to something else. Here's a cool Sumerian book from Thorkild Jacobson, The Harps That Wants, dot dot dot, Sumerian Poetry in Translation from Yale University Press, which is a good publisher, obviously, but you can't go by that because it's just like a university press. They print everything for the university, so um, this happens to be an excellent book and somewhat hard to come by. You know, $18 book probably used. So it's, it's pretty thick. It's like 500 pages. I'd say... I'd give it a 9 out of 10. You can, If you believe in Sumerian mythology and stuff, you might as well read what they wrote, because you might believe in something that's not even in that book, you know. Um, the Tibetan Book of the Dead from Shambhala, publisher. This book will scare you. I mean, in my opinion, I went through some deep experiences with this book. I'll never forget. So, this is the, the one to get. It's pretty cheap and easily to get. If you want to get into Tibetan Book of the Dead, this is the version. This book to me is just... It, I don't know what happened to me after it. Um, like, I slept in the woods after this, up in the mountains, and I was just really... It's like I'd entered the abyss or something. I mean, it was like existence had no meaning whatsoever after this. I mean, I can't explain it. It was really deep. And it, it may be that they wanted it to come off like that. I'm not saying it's 100% reality. Because things have been written by people. So, um, let's keep looking around here. Um, here's a pretty cool book that proves basically proves that Columbus was not the first person to come to the New World. The Vindelin Sagas, The Norse Discovery of America, translated by Magnus Magnuson and Hermann Paulsen. It's not very long, but this is really cool. And if that's like your ancestry, you'd want to get this and read it because it shows you that they're really good people and honest people even though they had traitors amongst them and it's it's a real book it's real I mean it's so real it's very real to me so that's from Penguin Classics they had they do all the literature you know that I would say is a 10 although you read it once you might not need to read it again it's not exactly a reference book you know it's so short you almost can memorize it here's um The Lost World of Agharti the Mystery of Virile Power from some strange New Age or avant-garde publisher, Souvenir Press, Alec McClellan. Now you would think, wow, this book's got to be great, right? And it was an English publisher. Okay. This book, honestly, kind of, it doesn't totally suck, but it, it really is not that good. It's okay. I would say four and a half, maybe, or five out of ten. So, they can put stuff like that together and make it sell, but I've definitely seen worse things than that. I wouldn't keep these really awful New Age occult books around because they just have a bad vibe. So, here's the number one book on the Bell Witch. The Infamous Bell Witch of Tennessee, Charles Edwin Price. Now this guy knows his stuff about the Bell Witch. The Bell Witch was a really strong ghost or entity in Tennessee that basically killed some people in their house. It's 
it's a very famous, well-known thing. I, most people know about it. This book is worth it. If you want to read the real story about it, and it even has like a picture in here. There's a few pictures in here. Uh, check it out. Um, where is it? It showed it. If I can find it. Yeah, this is really cool. It's not that expensive. Uh, dang. Here it is. A remarkable photo of the sinkhole just right to the Bellwitch Cave. There's like, it looks like some kind of white lines and stuff, like a spirit or something. So this is like a good read. Let's see what else we got. Um, this is kind of a cheapy book, a Harper Colophon book. So it's like Harper's like a mainstream publisher and they did like a new age astrology occult kind of thing with the Colophon, I think. So it's like a 70s astrology book, predicting with astrology. But for some reason, I learned a lot from this one book, and it shows you about, um, like, um, what do you call it? Like when you chart the course of the planets and you see where the lines cross, like where there's oppositions, or 90 degrees, you can do the, the charting of it, and it shows you when, when certain planetary alignments happen, like oppositions and stuff, they crossed it on the chart, on the graph. So I learned that from this book. I just want to point that out. Otherwise, it's not that great of a book. But for some reason, it's a little bit better than the mainstream astrology books. There's thousands of astrology books that all say the same thing. So this is not a technical astrology book, but it's pretty decent. So that book, um, I'll give it like a seven. Um, let me see what we got here. This is like one of these rune magic books. Um, yeah, look. This is rune magic from Siegfried Adolf Kummer. So it's like some people say, well, you're, you're a motherfucking Nazi for having that shit. Um, no, nah, it's not really Nazi shit. It's like it's from that time period, though. You know, it, it's kind of weird, but it has runes. They were trying to develop, like, this, like, runic theosophy stuff. Um, I picked it up because how often do you see this title? It's from Arminen, so, I mean, maybe they were Nazis, but... Like, it's kind of like Guido von List. He may have been the guy that this is associated with. Um... They weren't really Nazis, they were just like pagan theosophists. So, this book was probably six bucks or so. It's it's not an original printing, it's like somebody's uh, Xerox version. But, this is actually kind of an interesting book. But it's basically like a German central book, like German centered philosophy. Um, they may not have been anti-Semitic, so some people may have prejudice against that anyways, like any sort of runes, which is kind of a fallacy. So, are runes specifically, like, ancestral? I don't think so, but for whatever reason... See, it, it even has, like, these interesting hand signals and stuff. It is what it is. I mean, I think it's a worthy book. There's a lot of books on runes that are less worthy than this one. But it says the 18 Futhork runic alphabet. So it's not Futhark, it's Futhork. So that's rune magic by Coomer. It's from the Arminen. So that may upset some people that I have this. 
I wouldn't take too much offense at this book. There's nowhere in it that says anything um, national. Well, it's nationalistic, I would say, but pagan. So, pretty interesting. And just because you have a book um, doesn't um, mean that you believe in it. You may have it for whatever reason, just for the knowledge sake. So, um, let's move off of that and look at the next one. Something different, but similar. This is a reprint of William Lilly, the astrologer, the English um, astrologer of 1600s. It's called Christian Astrology, three volumes in one. Look at that. This is the Cosmo reprint. And when I when I ordered this, I was excited. But when I opened it, it's the actual facsimile reprint. And the writing is in the Old English typeset. So the S's look like F's and things like that. And it's spelled different in modern English. It's not that difficult of a book to read. And it has a lot of examples of astrology from those times and how they had to use astrology and rely on it for things that we take for granted now. They used astrology like to help locate missing animals and things. So that I would give a 10. That's a 10 book. Um, this I just threw in. It's I haven't read this. It's it's an old book. I thought it was a reprint. I don't know. Maybe it isn't. It's Jean Pleiades, the Spanish Inquisition. Its rise, growth, and end from the Citadel Press. New York. So it's like it looks like at least 800 pages, maybe less, but shows you some stuff about all about the Spanish Inquisition. So it's an important book. And it shows you something like this. Like Queen Mary of England. I mean, so this is interesting. It's missing the dust jacket. Um, I couldn't quite get rid of this because it's chock full of information. Uh, no rating for that. So, um, another Wallace Budge, <clears throat> Wallace Budge, Egyptian magic. This is good. I'd give it an 8. All of his stuff is good. Maybe it's not the end all of, of your studies, but it's definitely a cornerstone of the Egyptian studies in our day. What book is this? This, to me, is an astrology book. You know, something very serious in astrology that's not a mainstream astrology book, and it's even above and beyond some of the more scholarly astrology books. So, this is almost like a theosophical astrology book. Technique of Prediction by R.C. Davison. Um, and it's this is kind of hard to come by. Um, and it, it deals with some specific things uh, on prediction in astrology like progressions and stuff like that which I haven't quite mastered this particular thing don't know if I want to or not but it is rather difficult so I appreciate this book um, I think I'd be at a loss if I got rid of this book um, I'd give it a 7 
Here's uh, Francis A. Yates, Giordano Bruno, and the Hermetic Tradition, uh, a university press, uh, this one being University of Chicago Press. Um, Giordano Bruno, the philosopher who was burned at the stake, um, the Hermetic philosopher. Um, as with a lot of uni university books that are on university presses, somehow they seem better than they usually end up being. So, it seems like it's a really awesome book, but then again, it has some filler in it. So, and usually the universities take kind of an agnostic approach. So, this is good book, but not necessarily essential for Giordano Bruno. You'd be better off just going straight to his material, which is still kind of hard to find and poorly translated, even to this day. Plus, some of his material was lost. So, I'll keep this on hand. But it really... I'd give it maybe a 6, 7. Out of 10. Here's a reprint of A.P. Sinnott, the Theosophist um, in the Blavatsky era. This is called Super Physical Science. Um, it's just a reprint. Um, his main book was called Esoteric Buddhism. So, this is pretty good. Uh, I haven't read it, but it seems like I don't read anything. But these are just a small fraction of my collection of books. Um, I don't know. I, for whatever reason, this hasn't really grabbed my attention yet. Esoteric Buddhism, on the other hand, is is definitely worthy. I almost thought about doing an audiobook of that, but I don't think I will. Here's another one, Spiritual Powers in the War, 1915. A.P. Sinnott. So he lived at least to be that old, um, well beyond Blavatsky. She passed away in like 1890 something. Uh, this has really large print. It's something about like occult issues surrounding World War. So. I don't know. Yeah, I may look it over. Here's another Wallace Budge book, a hardcover. I think this is not a Dover. This is some, some other publisher, nothing too fabulous. But This is his famous book on the mummy. For Egyptology, a starting point is always with Wallace Budge. So that's another good one. Um, a Dover when they're usually in really bad shape. The thing is with these books, the binding always lasts. The Mysteries of Mithra by Franz Cumont. So for Mithra, Mithraism, the initiates of that school mentions Isis and Tertullian. And I'd like to read this through sometime. Um, here's a new book from Sun Vision Press. They're not very well known. The Bloody Countess, The Atrocities of Ursabet Bathory. So this is like a biographical thing about Bathory. And they, they actually did their homework and, and uncovered new information about Elizabeth Bathory. So... Um, it's, it, to me, this book seems like kind of coveted as a source of information on Bathory that's not on any other book. So that's what gives books value is the information. If they have information, it can't be gotten easily. So uh, I haven't really read it, but I'm not a huge fan of The Countess. It kind of goes along with metal. Just, I don't know. No comment on that. It's not something I read that much. H.P. Blavatsky, Speaking of Nightmares. Nightmare Tales from H.P. Blavatsky. 
That's a good read. It, it gives you some information on some stuff. Um, there's some goodies here. The pile's getting a little smaller, though. Um, the Divine Pymander um, from the Book Tree. Uh, this uh, Escondido, California alternative spiritualism publisher. Um, I don't know how good this translation really is, but it's the uh, the from Hermes, Tries Majestus, Divine Pymander, and other writings. This is good. It's good. Um, that's like, if it's really good, it's a 9, I'd say. It could be a 10 if it has the occult writings, too, with it. But I don't think so. The Gnostic Faustus by Ramona Freyden. Um, Inner Traditions, it's like a, a, a version of Bear, I think. They're related to Bear Publishing, and most of their books are not that great. Um, it's like, it's like easygoing stuff, but... This book is curious because it has the theosophic... I don't even want to use that term, but if you read Blavatsky, she does this, where they have multiple columns. So, it shows the Pistis Sophia, the Gnostic writings, and the, the uh, book of Faust. And she basically has uncovered that Faust was actually like a doctrine of Gnostic uh, belief. So... Whether or not she's 100% accurate, it doesn't matter because it's laid out so you can work it out yourself. So, this is a nice book. It really is. I don't need to rate every book. But here's a big bad boy. Now, this is from Llewellyn. This is probably their best book Llewellyn's ever published. Three books of occult philosophy written by Agrippa, the famous Henry Cornelius Agrippa. Edited and annotated by Donald Tyson. So, this gives you the whole thing. So, there's a fourth book that's separate from this. But this is basically the meat and potatoes. And I don't eat meat, right? But it's still of Agrippa. The only other one is the natural philosophy ones from him. I'd say 80% of this is false. So, you have to learn from something other than this. Yeah, but people do learn from this, albeit not in the truth. But, I wouldn't get rid of it, but it's definitely not... 100% factual. Um, I have the Secret Doctrine. Slight, two slightly different versions, but Volume 1, Volume 2. This is the correct versions. They're not edited at all. They're the Blavatsky versions from Theosophical University Press, the people in Pasadena that I kindly met when I was out there. So, that's good. That's a 10 or 11. If it goes to 11. Here's an interesting one. Sphinx and the Megaliths. John Ivami. There's some book, but it has some peculiar stuff in it. It's not your typical run-down book. There's thousands of the same books out there. So when I find things that don't contain the same stuff as the rest of the books, I set them aside. And these are books that I found interesting. So I haven't read it, and I may, who knows if I ever will, but just looking through it, you see that there's something to it. It's not just the same information. So for some of these books, you may get a little bit of a piece of knowledge here and there. Others, like Blavatsky, it's more of a source book. Agrippa is almost like, 
it's not a source book to me. It's but some of the stuff in it is good as a starting point, and other stuff is just fiction. So this is a very nice book. The first novel ever written that we know of, The Golden Ass, and it's the Robert Graves translation. He's like an excellent writer, an Englishman. It's from Apuleius. And I read this through and it blew my freaking mind. And if you read this through, you would tell me this book did not blow your mind or what. So that's Farrar, Strauss, and Giraud. The Golden Ass. The Yellow Dust Jacket. Awesome. Ian Bleekus's Exhortation to Philosophy, translated by Thomas Johnson, who was a Neoplatonist uh, American, I believe, from 1920. Um, from Fanes. Fanes is a decent publisher to get Neoplatonism and some magic type stuff. I had a few of their books, and they're well done books. Um, Um, this is not high up on my list. I'm glad that I acquired it at a cheap price because it's really not worth forty dollars. It's not really. I'd say it's a good ten dollar book, but you don't see it for that cheap. Um, this book's. It's not great. It really isn't. But they try to cover Ian Bleakus in it, in a roundabout way. Yeah, it, it's a bit silly. I'll admit it. Um, here's another William Lilly, The Astrologer's Guide. It's kind of some weird printing of it. But it also has this version. It also has the aphorisms of Cardan. So and I think it has the considerations of um, Bonatus. So it's a, it's a good little compilation there. Astrologer's Guide by William Lilly. Um, so it has the Cardan and the Bonatus as appendix. And things. So I'll give you the ISBNs of that. Excellent material, serious astrology, classical astrology. Um, this is interesting. Ayurveda, Science of Self-Healing by Dr. Vazant Laud, Practical Guide. Um, he's an Indian, and he talks about Ayurveda. But you can see it has some cool stuff in it. It's not just your basic book. So it stayed in my collection. I got rid of hundreds of books. You can't waste money if you're looking for knowledge. Buying books and selling books is a very um, good way to spend your time. And it's you'll never waste a penny doing it. Even if you end up throwing the book out. or Don't do that. At least donate it or give it to someone. Everyone has to work on their own level. Here's a conspiracy book. Founding Fathers, Secret Societies. Um... This is on Destiny, and they don't really do books that I read a lot, but from Bob Hieronymus, Ph.D. So it's, this one's actually decent. The other ones I don't like as much. There's not many books on this subject that I really care about, but this one is interesting. It's not great. I'd give it a six. But that's not putting it down. Sir Thomas Heath, Aristarchus of Samus, the ancient Copernicus. This is on Dover again. It's pretty heady stuff in this one. There's quite a few of these ancient mathematics books from Dover. It's a bit much for me, but I do appreciate it, and it looks cool to have. They're cool collector's items. It's a seven dollar book. But somehow I bought it for nine fifty used. So it's cool. I haven't really looked at it. Here's one from 
what is it? One of these Paladin Press types of books here. It's not the Close Quarter Combat with with Jeffrey Prather for U.S. Army Special Forces. So it shows you how you can like rip people into pieces. It's kind of fun. Well, the book anyway. Witchcraft in the Southwest. This is another university book. Or no, it's it's not. I thought it was. Yeah, University of Nebraska Press. By Mark Simmons. Spanish and Indian Supernaturalism on the Rio Grande. And it has some pretty neat stories in it. And look, it shows Sacred Datura in there. When the Indians uh, did witchcraft against the priests and stuff, it, it has the accounts of that, like in Taos and stuff. The, you know... Moving along, what the heck? This is Soma Elixir, and there's a companion book by these guys called Sacred Soma Shamans. They're pretty much famous for their knowledge on uh, Amanita Muscaria. Uh, I bought these from them. Uh, I think it might be signed. No, they didn't sign it, but really awesome stuff very factual and highly respectable 10 books here and I'm very hard to get about visionary usage and proper shamanic usage of Amanitas so. Soma Shamans. Their site is Red Angels. Um, and in the area of double books, here's two Ha Ha Lung books. Um, they're from Citadel Press, Kensington, so that's kind of a cheap publisher. But these aren't cheap. These are decent. I'd give them a five each. Talks about, you know, kind of like martial arts type stuff. I got Hesiod here. Theogen. I got notes on the Bhagavad Gita from William Kwan Judge of Theosophy. This is another 11 book right here. If you really think about the subjects in this, it takes you to another level. This book I put right here in my heart. This book I haven't really tackled yet. I tried it. <clears throat> this is two books, though. It, or, it's Beelzebub's Tales to His Grandson from Gurdjieff. But this is a different version than you normally see. It's an old hardcover version. So it says All and Everything First Series. So this, and it's from Dutton. But this is All and Everything was like the title for... A number of works, I believe, and this is the first series in that series. So, it's entitled. I mean, it's encrypted, kind of. I don't know why I said entitled, but yeah, this book's like encrypted. Gurdjieff's the real deal. Spiritual master. Um. Strange, stupor, strange Superstitions and Magical Practices. Really weird book. From Fielding, William Fielding. I don't know, there's some weird stuff in this one. In particular. I mean, there's hundreds of books like this, but this one's weird. There's my copy of Faustus. So this is a Gnostic book, basically. It has occult knowledge in it. Tutankhamen, another Wallace Budge book. See? Amenism, Atenism, and Egyptian monotheism with hieroglyphic texts and stuff. So this one's really cool. 
There's so much to study, especially about Egypt. And the last book of this little run through. This is just a fraction of my books, but I'm not really a book collector like to impress you. It's just when you when you buy and sell books, there's some books you don't want to leave, and then you also find out about books that you want. This is called the Yoni, sacred symbol of female creative power, and so it's like it's kind of a sexual book so it's about like a vagina and stuff but it's kind of spiritual about it and this is from inner traditions so they do a few books here and there I'll read but overall I pass through that kind of material so it shows some nudity in here some like women's stuff going on It even shows rocks. I can show you that at least. Rocks that look like vaginas. It's the sacred symbol of female creative power. Is this some of my favorite books? I don't know. I'd give it like a six. But it has some cool pictures, but... It's not that great overall. So, that wraps it up. Um, thanks for watching and thank you.